Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcasting. How is everybody? Can you hear me? Hello, hello, welcome. Hope everybody is doing okay. Give me one if you can hear me and tell me if my sound is loud and clear. Thank you guys. Thank you for the one. How is everybody? Hope everybody is okay. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Um, actually, today I didn't want to do a live show, but I was like, let's see if our friends here are interested in another live show. Uh, I'm feeling uh, better now, guys. My health is okay again. Thanks to the Lord, we are back to our normal health. Thank you, God. So, guys, before we start, uh, <clears throat> I want to do another prayer with you guys. So, can God guide us to do to today's live show? So, pray with me, guys. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies, taqiyya and deceptions. Please, Lord, guide us. We need your guidance, God, so that we might reflect your light within this dark world and that we speak your word with boldness, without any shame, because we have the truth, Lord, and draw others to your feet. We ask this through your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done for the truth, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you for joining in. On this live broadcast today, we will have the opportunity to talk about the corruption of the Quran. Yes, you heard it correctly. I think this is a topic that um, have been discussed many times over, but maybe some things are not clear enough or some people are really interested in this topic. This could be a very dry material, so you have to be with me to understand the details that we are going to go through. We will go to very authentic details to show you that actually the Quran has been corrupted during the centuries by Muslim hands. And last but not least, like always when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat about the mentioned topic or if there are Muslims who can call in on, on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. If you have the courage and the knowledge as a Muslim, only as a Muslim, please call me live on Skype. I will open up my Skype and you can call me to refute me. In other words, you can ask me questions and I will try to answer as far as I can. Hopefully we will have a nice, respectful, knowledgeable Ustaz, maybe from Indonesia, or maybe an Imam or Sheikh with a PhD from uh, Medina or uh, Al Azhar University, the number one university of Islam in the world. So let us start today's teaching, guys. Thank you for joining in. Did you uh, have a nice time on uh, Christian Prince's live show, guys? I hope it was a nice live show. Uh, hope you're not tired. <laughs> so uh, if you uh, can invite your friends. Maybe you can uh, share the link on social media, on Facebook, so people will be notified about my today's teaching. Also, don't forget to <clears throat> subscribe and smash that like button, please. You know how YouTube works by now. And also click on the notification bells to receive notification when we go live. 
know, because we always need to push extra because YouTube sometimes goes against us when we <laughs> expose Islam, you know? So we have to, you have to help me to help you, right? For the truth. Help me to help you. So, before we start actually the main topic of today, yesterday, as you noticed in uh, the end of my live show, uh, I got visitors on my door and I had to uh, suddenly stop the live show, unfortunately. So, sorry for that. I At that moment, I had a Muslim calling in and I asked him if he could call me back today and talk about that topic. And the topic was about this, guys. You know, we Christians, we don't run. We don't hide, right? So, the, the question uh, uh, was, show me anything that is really... So show me evidence that Muhammad is a true prophet. And we went through all kind of so-called prophecies that were not fulfilled, were false prophecies in the Quran. He could not show me any miracles. He mentioned uh, the so-called miracle about the splitting of the moon. But we showed him and refuted that claim. He was Googling, guys, by the way. <laughs> the, the poor kid. He's a young kid, I think. He, he sounded really respectful, but he was a young kid. He was asking Prophet Google uh, to help him out during our discussion. So he mentioned the splitting of the moon. Well, that's talking about future event, right? The hour is near and the moon will be split. That's not what Muhammad did. Muhammad saw an eclipse, right? And he thought, hey, this must be the end of time. And he even said, Muhammad even said that... Uh, the end of times will be uh, very soon. And still now, after 1400 years, nothing happened. We're still here. The end of times did not come. Uh, you know, that's, those are nothing but signs of a false prophet. And we know that Muhammad is nothing but a false prophet. So, and later he mentioned this ayah, guys. Chapter 99, Surah 99, uh, verse 8, as you see in front of you. And he said, you know, this, this is the atom. So here, you know, modern translations, and especially uh, translations like uh, Sahih International. Before I refute it, let me, let me sh uh, tell you about Sahih International, right? As you see here in front of you, Sahih International is written by three women from America. Not only that, you know what Muhammad says about women, right? Muhammad says that women are half-brained. They, are, they are, have a deficient in their brains, right? They are not like the men. This is why you need two women to be equal to one man. So, read with me to, to know and understand what is the most used uh, translation for the Quran, which is Sahih International. It is available throughout the world. The Holy Quran, the translation was made in 1997. So, it, recently, right? Just recently, is a translation a translation by three American women converts. Did you catch it? They, they are not even Arabic speakers. So they learned Arabic later. Look how what their names are. Emily Asami. Emily, man. Emily. Not even uh, Aisha or Khadija. Amatullah Bentley. So this one changed her name. I think they, these women maybe fell in love with... Uh, a Muslim guy and you know they had to uh, convert to Islam so they can marry those guys right so they were converts not even real Muslims not even Arabs right not Arabs like me or Christian Prince or a guy from Saudi Arabia or whatnot right Mary Kennedy so these three women <laughs> I kid you not guys these three women wrote the best-selling, the most used Sahih International in, um, translation for the Quran. And that's the number one English translation for the Quran, which is also the number one deceptive translation. It's the biggest deceptive translation. I wonder why. Maybe because it's written by women, like Muhammad said, women are, uh, you know, you can't trust women. They are half-brained, right? <laughs> so naming themselves Sahih International, did you catch it? So the team was called Sahih International. These three women. Right? So this is a little background story about... Yeah. Wow, right? 
How many people know this? How many Muslims know this? So, and then guys, then look what happened. Then it's published by Dar Ab Abu Abu Qasim, publishing house Saudi Arabia. So a official publisher from Saudi Arabia published this English translation. So imagine guys, even Saudi Arabia now in 1997, after they done the translation, they published it from three women. I mean, if that's not hypocrisy, I mean, you are not allowing at that time, you, uh, Saudi Arabia was not even allowing women to drive a car, let alone, let alone using the translation of women. I mean, you are not allowed to drive a car, but yeah, it's okay to, to use the most important book for the Muslims to translate it. Hypocrisy on top of hypocrisy. Did you catch it? So that's the, what I wanted to explain first. So if we go, if we go back, so here this Muslim was saying, oh look, Muhammad is talking about the atoms. How, can, how, is, how is it possible that 1400 years ago, Muhammad knew about atoms? That, that, that means he must be an, guys, he must be a true prophet, right? But wait a second, guys. If we go to any modern translation like Sahih International, as you see here, you will see, that they all use the word atom. But that's not what this word means. Lirratin, right? It means ant. It means ant. And not even an ant, the, the small ants, right? The baby ants, basically. Right? Baby ants. I went to uh, Prophet Google, peace be upon him, Google Translate, even gives me corn. Did you see it? Corn. A shred. Do you see here anywhere? Do you see here anywhere uh, something called uh, atom? You see the word, right? This is the same word, guys. I'm not lying. You see? Same word. Lirratin. Right? Shred. I don't know what yacht mean. Or mealies. A yoda. Corn. So it gives me corn. Now an, uh, an atom became corn. So it's not, you can, you know, an atom, you can't see it with your own eyes. You need a, a very powerful tool, right? Like a uh, microscope. Uh, I hope uh, I'm not butchering the English word. You know, my, I think a microscope to see it, right? So a corn, you can see it with your own. An ant, you can see it with your own. Did Muhammad own a uh, microscope to see the atom? No, there's nothing called atom. Right? So this is a modern translation from 1997, right? Where after the discovery of atoms, right? So I went and I did some research. I mean, come on guys, maybe Rob Christian is lying, right? So yesterday I uh, had to close the live show because I really had to go. People were standing on my front uh, door, ringing on my front door. So I had to really to go. So sorry for that. But if we go through this website, guys, the word Dirratin in chapter 1061, so you can find it also in chapter 60, sorry, 10, 6, and then IS61, here, you see that? Here's the word. This is the word, right? And here it's translated to Adam's, Adam's weight, which is a lie. It's not, uh, it's the weight of an ant. Let me prove it to you guys. So, like we said, it's mentioned in chapter 99, but also in chapter 10, Ayah 61. The word Dhiratin in chapter 10, Ayah 61, means small red ant. So, it's not even the, the adult uh, ant, it's the baby ant, right? And anyone who claims that it means an atom in the Quran is not telling us the truth. I mean, this is not my website. Right? This is not my website. I didn't write this. So... Let us continue, guys, before we go to the actual topic of today. Because we have to deal with every claim that Muslims make, right? So, I was reading an article by a Muslim. So, this guy who wrote this website. I was reading an article by a Muslim apologist that the word dhirratin or dharra in chapter 1061 and chapter 99, right? This is chapter 99, also mentioned there. Really means an atom. Did you catch it? So, Muslims claim that it's an atom. So, they... They are using a modern 
meaning because remember guys remember take notes a word in arabic can have many meanings but this is a modern meaning that was added later after the discovery of the true atoms right does anyone know does anyone know when an atom was discovered in which year if i go to prophet google peace be upon him when just i, I i'm tiny typing when was an atom discovered in what year it was in the year let me show you on the screen we never heard of atoms before guys here one was an atom discovered what year was it it was in one was an atom discovered Whoa. what year was it it was in i just heard myself double okay it was in the year 1897 the next major advance in the history of atom was the discovery of electrons. Did you catch it? So it was in 1897. So after that, when the Arab world also heard about it, they started to add another meaning to this word. Since suddenly this word also meant not only a small ant, also it started to mean an atom. Did you catch it? So <laughs> in 1897. I think Muhammad died in 632, right people? Muhammad died in 632. Not so long ago, exactly, Frau Kolai. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, my friend. So in 1897, an atom was discovered. So they, the Arab world started to add new meanings to one word. So one word in Arabic can have many meanings, right? And if we continue, and how can an illiterate Arab, Muhammad, be telling us about the atom some 1400 years ago unless the Quran is the word of the true God. So that's the claim that Muslims make, right guys? They don't tell you, they don't tell you that the atom was found in, in, uh, in, in the 1800s, like we mentioned, in the, in the late 1800s, right? Almost in 1900, right? They, they are not saying that, but they are claiming, hey, uh, so Muhammad must be a true prophet because he, he knew about the atoms, right? Allah through Jibreel, right? Allah through Jibreel mentioned the atoms to Muhammad, which is a major, big scam, big lie that Muslims. So Muslims are adding to, to the Quran when they translate the Quran, right? They are adding in their translations like these comebacks, these ladies from Sahih International, like Al Maududi, like, like many, many translators, like. Uh, Yusuf Ali and whatnot. All these filthy scammers who are deceiving or trying to deceive the non Arabic speaking world. Right? And if you continue, and here is the shameful Sahih International. Guys, I just mentioned it, right? These women, that's team of three converts, women, they translated into a atom, right? So, where the word dhirratin or dharra becomes atom and not a small red ant. So, the real meaning, guys, in the time of Muhammad, it really actually meant a small red ant, right? And as we mentioned in chapter 1061, so that's Sahih International. Now, compare the above shameful translation with the real meaning of the word. Now, guys, we are going to go to the real meaning of the word dhirratin or dharra, as Muhammad would have understood it. Did you catch it? In Lisan al-Arab, the earliest and most authoritative dictionary of the Arabic language and the word dharra means an-naml al-ahmar al-saghir this or in tr if we translate what here says the Arabic the small red ants did you catch it guys that's what Lisan al-Arab Lisan al-Arab guys is the most authentic dictionary for the Arabic language right we just proved to you that there's nothing called atom in the Arabic original so-called original Arabic Quran there's nothing called original Arabic Quran it's lost show us one manuscript right that's today's topic show us one manuscript right for the Quran where is it you know let me give you the this website guys you can go later and uh, 
go through it. You know, and he's mentioning many uh, websites like IslamWeb.net, very, very well-known Arabic, Muslim Arabic website mentioning this. And small, and you see it's all... Sigharan is, is the, the, the small ants, the very small ants, so the baby ants, right? The small ants. And, if, you know, even there are, there's even an honest Muslim, there's a Muslim Arab who is, who is saying it means a small ant, right? Here is the website. This guy is a Muslim. Let me show you. This guy is a Muslim, right? If we click on translate... Let me click on translate. You see here, you can always translate, right? You see, he's talking about this very topic, right? He's talking about a topic. Maybe the, the uh, English is very horrible, but if we, if we try to uh, read it, often we hear them say to ants, Maze, and this is saying true Arabic, is common to the public tongues, which is eloquent words to talk to the Arabs, as in linguistic dictionary, as we mentioned, right? Said in the tongue of our corn, little red ants. Did you catch it, guys? Right? And he says here, ant does not bite. So the ant bites, but bites, atom, atom bites you, right? If bitten, if bitten, atom kills you. So, you know, this is a very bad translation because it, this is Google Translate. But you get the idea, right, guys? What is What are you saying? Jonathan Giri, I don't understand your question. What about the atoms subject today you left halfway? Well, yesterday we were mentioning this. This is why I need to address this, right? So, the meaning is a small ant, you know? And as, as we showed you, <laughs> Google Translate gives us corn. Some ants talk, yeah. An atom can talk now too. Right? So there's nothing called atom, guys. This is nothing but a modern translation. Muslims are trying when they translate the Quran, right? They are using modern meanings for a very old word, right? Yeah, some ants talk, right? Of course, to Solomon, right? In the valley of the ants. Yes. So let us go, guys. So we refuted yesterday's claim by that Abdul who called me on Skype. Let us go to the actual topic of today, guys. Right? We are not, we are not running, we are not hiding. Right? So we always are here to refute Islamic claims. False claims, we are not stupid, we can do some research for ourselves. So, today's topic is the Quran corrupted. Is the Quran of Allah corrupted? If we go to islamqna.info, guys, islamqna.info, official, official Salafi Sunni website, and the Sheikh of this website is Sheikh Muhammad. Salah al Munajid. Right? So he says, Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah. Is it buffering, guys? Can you see the screen? Is there something wrong with the screen, guys? Maybe I need to close some. Uh... Is, can you, is it buffering? Or is it only for love and light? Uh, this problem. Okay, now, okay. Maybe I have too many uh, screens open. But if we read this, guys, the Sheikh is explaining. Firstly, it was narrated by Abdullah, the son of Imam Ahmed, in Zawaid al-Musnad, hadith number 21207, Abdul Razzaq al-Musnaf, Musannaf 599, Ibn Hiban in his Sahih. So this is Sahih, right? In Al-Hakim al-Mustadrak, Al-Bayhaqi, in a Sunnan, Ibn Hazm al Muhallafi via Asim Ibn blah blah, so many names, right? Howling, so this guy, Obey Ibn Kaab, said to me, So this Obey Ibn Kaab is asking this guy, How long is Surat al Ahzab? Guys, Surat al Ahzab is one of the chapters in the Quran, right? So there's a question from a Sahabi, 
asking another Sahabi, how long is Surat Al Ahzab? He's asking, how many verses are in Surat Al Ahzab? When you read it, right? So one Sahabi, one companion is asking the other companion of Muhammad, how long is Surat Al Ahzab? Or how many verses do you think it is? Is the one asking the other. So he, the Sahabi tells the other Sahabi, says 73 verses. So the answer is 73 verses. He said only 73 verses? So look what the answer of Ubay ibn Kaab, and remember this name guys, this is a very important guy, and you will see in a couple seconds or minutes why this guy is so important. Remember the name, Ubay, Ubay ibn Kaab. He said only 73 verses? There was a time, so this guy is now going to refute it. So one Sahabi, one companion is going to refute the other companion saying, there was a time when it was as long as Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter 2, and we read in it the old man and the old woman, if they commit zina, then stone them both. Remember guys, remember the hadith of Aisha, her uh, sheep, remember that story? Let me go to show you. He's mentioning that hadith, guys. <sighs> Just a second. Let me get you the hadith. Okay, I found it. So, this is the hadith, guys. I hope you can see it. So here, the verse of stoning and adult breastfeeding ten times was revealed. And then the paper was me under my pillow. So Aisha is reporting this, that there were two verses... One of them is the stoning and one is, of them is adult breastfeeding. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death and a tame sheep came in and ate it. Do you see it? So a sheep, guys, a sheep, zina means adultery, right? Stoning. So stoning of people who commit adultery, right? So that verse was in the Quran originally. But the sheep of Aisha came and ate that. So the ayah of zina, the ayah of adult, adults stoning, people who commit adultery, they get stoned. It's not anymore in the Quran. So this sheep became actually, yes, as 19th October says, it be, the sheep of Aisha became very holy because it ate the holy Quran of Allah. Did you catch it? So this Sahabi, let, let us go back. So according to Obey ibn Kaab, guys, right? They committed adultery and then they have to be stoned. Uh-oh. So he's, he's telling them, there was an ayah like this in the Quran, in this same chapter, in Surat Al-Ahzab, guys, in Surat Al-Ahzab, it was found there. So we even know what that chapter was. Did you catch it, guys? If you didn't catch it, let me repeat it again. So according to Ubay ibn Kaab, guys, this part was in Surat Al-Ahzab, which is, which is a chapter of the Quran, right? Surat Al-Ahzab. And that chapter was as big as Surat Al-Baqarah, which is chapter 2. Surat Al-Baqarah is the biggest chapter, chapter 2, right? Chapter 2 was as big this chapter right chapter 2 it was as big as this chapter surah al ahzab right i don't know exactly what the number is but anyway yeah here chapter 33 guys let's see how many verses we have now in it only 73 did you catch it guys so it was as big as chapter 2 so as you see in front of you 
it has only 73 verses. But if we go to chapter 2, which is the biggest chapter, it has how many? 286. So how many verses are missing, guys? If we do 286 minus 73, how much do we get? Can someone do a nice calculation for us? 20, 286 minus 73, how many verses are missing? 211? No, 213, thank you. So 213, guys, ayas are missing. Exactly. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is clear proof that more, more than the half of this chapter, Surah Al Ahzab, is missing. 213 ayahs are missing. Wow. Aha. Uh -huh. The Quran must be corrupted, Muslims. And the proof is in front of you. This is Sahih. Sahih. Look how many books are mentioning this, guys. Sahih. Not one, not two. Look how many sources are mentioning. No, no, not 213 are eaten. No. We, we, we are not going to make that claim. But they are, 213 are missing. And one of them is the verse of stoning Zina people, right? People who commit zina, adultery, right? So this ayah that was eaten by the sheep of Aisha was in Surah Al-Ahzab, right? That was as big, originally as big as Surah Al-Baqarah. Did you catch it? And we read in it, so Obey ibn Kaab saying, and we used to read it, right? We used to read this eye of adult, uh, stoning ad adulterous, right? Then stone them both. So the people who commit zina, adultery, they you, had to be stoned. Where is this ayah? I, I will give a Muslim $1,000 if he can show me the ayah of committing zina. Stoning people who are committing zina. It's not there anymore. But according to the hadith, these, you know, they had to fix it. Look what it says here in the footnote. These verses were abrogated in a recitation, but not ruling. So still people commit zina, adultery, they have to be stoned. The ruling is still there, but the ayah is not there anymore. Because the sheep ate them. Now, question Muslims. You Muslims have always claimed, right? That the Quran is memorized by heart of the Sahaba for centuries now right and one sahaba is telling the other one and all the way till now right muslims are so proud that they are memorizing the entire quran are you telling me that the sheep of aisha went in the hearts of all the sahaba this holy sheep could do magic after he ate this ayahs these two ayahs the sheep could do magic went inside the heart of the sahaba who memorized the quran by heart and ate the ayahs from their hearts? The oral tradition, exactly. Are you telling me the sheep became so powerful that it went inside the hearts of the Sahaba to eat those ayahs from their hearts? I hope someday a Muslim can answer this question for me. Because I'm asking this question for the last 15 years. I hope, did you catch my question guys? Let me repeat it again. Muslims claim the, the Quran is memorized by heart and it started with the Sahaba, with the companions of Muhammad. Now when this sheep ate, for example, the verse of stoning and breastfeeding of an adult, did this sheep become so holy, so strong, so magical that it entered the hearts of the companions of Muhammad and it not only it ate the paper but also the eyes from their hearts? I want an answer for my question, Muslims. You are so proud about saying the Quran is memorized by heart. So this sheep was really very powerful, guys. Truly powerful. Right? So let us go back. So here, guys, we just showed you that one chapter 
was as big as Surat Al-Baqarah, which is chapter Al-Ahzab. And this is the Sahih Isnad. So the chain of narration is very, very, very Sahih, right? And look how many people are reporting this incident. Narrated by this and narrated. So look how many. See that? Let me give you the link, guys. Please copy this link and use it in your debates with Muslims. All right. This is an official Islamic Salafi Sunni website. There is no fault in which there is no fault. Right. The Isnad is Sahih. 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 Right? Found your, uh, someone is saying found your channel. Thank you for being here, my friend. Is the sheep related to Aisha's goats? Rob Christian, same hadith. I, I don't understand your question, sorry. But yeah, maybe they are family. I don't know what you mean. So, guys, remember the name Obey ibn Kaab? Remember him what I, when I said to you, try to remember his name? Obey ibn Kaab. Now, here is why. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 3806. I know guys, this is very dry material. Maybe it's not for everybody. But we're going to prove to you today from many sources that the Quran is actually very corrupted. Not as Muslims claim. The Quran, not word has been changed. Not word, not le one letter has been changed. We're home. <laughs> Oh, we're going to destroy those claims today. We have so many ev evidence today, guys. If you like this topic, stay with me, be with me all the way to the end. Right? I know it's very dry material. Maybe people like Christian Prince don't lock, like to talk about this, but I do because I like also to go to the academic part, right? To show you that the Quran is actually very corrupted. So, Read with me this hadith, guys. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. I heard the Prophet saying, so Muhammad saying, this guy heard the Prophet saying, learn the recitation of Quran from four persons. Ibn Mas'ud, the number one guy in Mecca. Salim the Freed, slave Abu Hudayfa. Ubay and Muhad bin Jabal. The same Ubay, guys. Ubay ibn Kaab that we hear saw talking, right? Obey Ibn Kaab, the same guy who asked the other guy, how long is Surat Al-Ahzab, right? And we showed you that Surat Al-Ahzab, 213 eyes are missing. So this is the same Obey. Now Muhammad said, basically in this hadith guys, if you notice, Muhammad is saying, if you want to know about the true Quran, go to four people, Ibn Mas'ud, Salim the freed slave, Ubay and Mu'ad bin Jabbal. Ubay, Ibn Mas'ud. Now, if we go to Ibn Mas'ud, let's see what Ibn Mas'ud has to say. The number one guy that Muhammad told the Muslims to go to regarding the recitation of the Quran. This hadith is very, very important for Muslim world. Very important stuff. Right? Take notes, guys. Let me give you the link. Maybe our friend Phil Ferreira can also help. Oh, okay, thank you, Phil. Guys, please keep our dear brother, Phil Herrera, in your prayers. He is doing an amazing job as an admin. Thank you very much, Phil. Your work is much appreciated, my friend. So, if we go and study carefully what is happening here, guys. Notice, Muhammad starts by naming Ibn Mas'ud. Remember? Ibn Mas'ud. And the narrated emphasizes this fact. Indeed, the narrated goes on to say that he loves Ibn Mas'ud. We can safely infer that this hadith intends to convey Ibn Mas'ud as the best teacher of the Quran. Did you catch it? He's the number one guy to go to, right? The number one guy. Thank you for your prayers, my friends. Keep us in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. We need it because we are putting our lives on stake on the front lines to expose this satanic death cult, this satanic sex cult called Islam. We need to do this so that Muslims stop claiming that the Quran is uncorrupted and eternal, right? 
which is false claim and today we are refuting that. So Ibn Mas'ud is the best teacher of the Quran, right? In the whole Mecca. Because Muhammad said so, right? Muhammad said so. Go to Ibn Mas'ud. Being a proud expert of the Quran, Ibn Mas'ud would agree that his mastery of the Quran was unrivaled. So this guy was claiming, I'm the number one guy. He was claiming it. And we're going to show it to you. Of his own prose, he says, narrated Abdullah ibn Mas'ud himself saying, by Allah, look, he's swearing. Ibn Mas'ud is swearing by Allah than whom none has the right to be worshipped. There is no surah revealed in Allah's book, but I know at what place it was revealed. So this same Ibn Mas'ud saying, I am the one to go to. I know everything about the Quran. No problem, Jonathan Nagiri. My pleasure. We had to, right? We had to finish the topic about the Adams. So Ibn Mas'ud is saying, I am the number one guy. There is no, no one equal like me who knows about the Quran, right? And there is no verse revealed in Allah's book, but I know about whom it was revealed. Look what kind of claims this guy is making. And no one is silencing him because people know this guy is the one, right? Muhammad himself told them to go to him, right? And if I know that there is somebody who knows Allah's book better than I, look what this Abin Mas'ud is saying, and he is at the place that camels can reach, I will go to him. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6, page 488. Did you catch it? So this guy is saying if he knows someone who knows the Quran better than him, he will go to him to learn from him, right? Are you still with me, guys? Are you still following what we are saying here? Or is it too, too hard for you? I mean, be honest, guys. If you can't follow me, or, then there's no need to continue, right? Okay, so people, only four? Wow, five? How many people do we have at the moment, guys? I'm not sure if this topic is really interesting enough. But we have only 78? Only 78? Wow, that's bad. Anyways, it's not about the numbers. Guys, I know this is very, very dry material. Not many Christian apologists love to talk about this topic because, you know, after a while it can become very boring, right? But we know we have to do this because there are not many videos on YouTube that mention this. I've tried to find them, but it's really hard to find such material, right? So, however, Ibn Mas'ud does not think highly of today's Quran. Why is that? The one collected by Zayd. Now, question Muslims. Question. Did Muhammad say to go to Zayd ibn Thabit? Now, if we go back, guys, the story goes like this. When Muhammad dies, right, Abu Bakr and Uthman are commanding their followers to collect the Quran because a lot of people died in battles who memorized the Quran. So Abu Bakr, first he started, he, they were afraid that the Quran would be lost, right? The Quran will be lost because companions who were memorizing the Quran, so called by heart, were dying in a battle. The, there was a battle, one of the battles, they were completely butchered. Many, many Sahaba died. And the Quranic ayahs were lost. So, out of fear, Abu Bakr and later Uthman, they commanded the Quran to be collected and put on paper. Muhammad never commanded his companions to collect the Quran and put it on paper. No. It was Abu Bakr and then later Uthman to write it in the Qurayshi dialect, right? So what did Uthman do? There were many different recitations, right? Remember? And Muslims say the Quran was given to Muhammad in seven ways, seven ahruf, right? So Uthman destroyed six of them and only made one perfect copy, which is the Uthmanic recitation, right? The Uthmanic recension, right? So Muslims claim now today that they have the, the Quran of Uthman, the Uthmanic copy. And when Uthman gave 
the command to collect the Quran. He gave the command to Zaid and his team. Now, question Muslims. Did Muhammad say, go to Zaid? Let us go back to the Hadith. Do you see the name of Zaid here, guys? No. Muhammad did not say, go to Zaid. He said, go to Ibn Mas'ud. Go to Ubay Ibn Kaab. There is no Zaid. Why? Because Zaid was a very young boy at that time. He didn't know anything about the Quran yet. It was Ibn Mas'ud, right? Why didn't, why didn't Uthman command Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay Ibn Kaab to collect the Quran and put it on paper? And look what is what Ibn Mas'ud is saying about the Uthmanic Quran. Let watch guys, this is very important stuff. I know it's very dry and very detailed information that maybe can put you asleep. But please, if you care about this topic and make and take notes and stay with me. In comparing himself to Zaid, he said, look what Ibn Mas'ud is saying about Zaid. The people have been guilty of deceit. Oh, oh. So the number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud, guys, is saying that Zayd ibn Thabit is a deceiver. In the reading of the Quran. Did you catch it? Oh, uh oh. Why? Because Ibn Mas'ud had his own personal mushaf. Right? His own personal Quran. And he didn't want it, it to give it to Zaid or let alone to Uthman to be burned. Remember, Uthman gathered all the recitations that were put on paper on a pile and he set them on fire. That day, guys, the Quran was being barbecued by Uthman and his men. Yes, there was a nice Quranic barbecue. So... What happened now today if we burn a Quran on the streets of London, let's say? How many people, how many Christians will die in Pakistan? Right? Because of burning. Or, I mean, if, if someone make a cartoon about Muhammad, many Christians die in the, in the Middle East, right? Madness, right? Madness. Let alone, why, I mean, why didn't Uthman was killed by the Muslims? Oh, wait, he was killed. <laughs> Uthman was killed by Muslims. He was murdered, butchered during prayer. And we know now why, right? I mean, I would have, if I was a Muslim, I would have set Uthman on fire or at least butchered him with a knife if, he was, if I saw him burning the Quran of Allah. This guy was burning original manuscripts of the Quran. And who is Uthman, guys? Anyone knows who Uthman is? He was one of the four first caliphs, right? First, it was Abu Bakr, then it was Umar, then you had Uthman ibn Affan, the same guy that we are mentioning. So, according to Ibn Mas'ud, people are guilty of reading, guilty of deceit, deceive, they are deceivers. I like it better to read according to the recitation of him, the Prophet, who I love more than that of Zayd ibn Thabit. So, Ibn Mas'ud did not love. Zaid, the one who got the command to collect the Quran. Did you catch it? And this is from Ibn Sa'd. Ibn Sa'd. Tabaqat. Kitab al-Tabaqat al-Kabir. Very highly respectful book. Page number 444. So as we can see, the differences between Ibn Mas'ud's Quran and Zaid's Quran were not minor. Why? Because... Zayd ibn Thabit, his Quran is 114 chapters, right guys? The Quran of today is 114 chapters, but the, the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud contains only 111 chapters. So three chapters are missing. And that's the number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud, right? In his Quran, there are no, no 40, 114 chapters. Let me type it out for you. Did you catch it? So three chapters are missing. One of them is Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter, guys. Ibn Mas'ud did not have this chapter, chapter Al-Fatiha, in his Quran because it's simply a prayer. Right? Remember? It's a prayer. 
right? And here is why. Here is why, guys. Chapter 15. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but let me clarify it better this, today, since this is the topic of today. And we have certainly given you, O Muhammad, seven of the often repeated verses and the great Quran. Did you catch it? And the great Quran. So, the Quran and Al-Fatiha, the seven often repeated verses, which is Al-Fatiha, were never part of the Quran because it says, and the great Quran. Did you catch it? And the great Quran. So, the Al-Fatiha was never part of the Quran. Why do I know that, guys? If we go to the Tafsir, here is why. This is the same chapter. Chapter 15, I 87. Look what it says from Tafsir Al-Jalalain. One of the oldest, highly most respectful Tafsirs. And verily we have given you seven of the often repeated verses. Right? The Prophet said that this meant Surah Al-Fatiha, which is, which is chapter 1. As reported by the two Shaykhs, Bukhari and Muslim. Right? Since it is repeated in every unit of the prayer, Raka. And! What? And the great Quran. Did you catch it? So, chapter 1, Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Fatiha, was never part of the Quran. This is why Ibn Mas'ud, this is why Ibn Mas'ud, uh, sorry, this is why Ibn Mas'ud had only 111 chapters, right? Hundred and eleven chapters. So Ibn Mas'ud only has hundred and eleven chapters of the Quran. This is why he called the Quran of Zayd ibn Thabit a deceit. Remember? That's what he said. The people have been guilty of deceit. Why? Because their Quran is false Quran. They have added three chapters more that should not be there in the Quran because they are prayers only. Why? Because chapter 1 is only a prayer. It's not Quran. Allah is praying here, remember? Allah is saying in the name of Allah. Allah is asking for to be guided. Right? This is a disaster. This is why we can use this against them. If, if you know, Muslims say the Quran is the speech of Allah. Now, if the Quran is the speech of Allah, why is Allah asking to be guided? Right? Did you catch it? So this is why the Quran has been corrupted, guys. Zayd ibn Thabit, that was commanded by Uthman to collect the Quran and put it in a perfect Uthmanic copy, as if the Quran was already not perfect enough, right? So they had to make the Quran perfect all over again. <laughs> Lord of mercy. And Uthman burned the rest of the Qurans. So there were seven ways. He burned six of them and he only kept one. And that was the, the dialect of the Quraysh, right? The dialect of the Quraysh, the pagans, right? So the dialect of Muhammad himself. Did you catch it? So Ibn Mas'ud, the number one guy, called this Quran of today, which has 114 chapters, nothing but a deception. This is the number one guy talking, right? The number one guy who Muhammad told you to go to as a Muslim. Do you see the name Zaid? No. Do you see the name of Uthman? No. Uh oh. Uh -huh. I know guys, this is very, very deep stuff, right? Christian Prince will say, oof, 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 Rob Christian. Why are you doing this to the people? <laughs> I know. I know, guys. But please bear with me. And you need to download this video and share it everywhere. Because this video, you won't find a video like this online. Trust me. You won't find such study, deep study about the corruption of, of the Quran like today. Right? Download this, guys. If you like some parts, download the video after YouTube processes it. And... Cut some part that you like to use in your debates with Muslims. 
Because Muslims are victims, guys, you need to show them that the Quran is corrupted. Because for the last 1400 years, Muslims have claimed that the Quran is uncorrupted. Not even one letter has changed, which is false. How many verses were missing, guys? From one, only one chapter, 213, we counted them, right? According to, to the number three guy that Muhammad mentioned, Ubay ibn Kaab, right? He said 213 ayahs are missing from Surah Al Ahzab, right? Do you remember? We just mentioned it. Exactly, Phil. Exactly, my friend. Not only that, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud version of the Quran did not have Surah 1. Like I said, guys, did you catch it? Not Surah 13 and not Surah 14. So the number one guy had only 111 chapters, right? And these are the surahs, these are the chapters that are missing. Chapter 1, which is only a prayer. Chapter 113 and 114. They were not there in the Quran, they have been added later. Do you like it, guys? Is this clear proof? That the Quran of Allah has been corrupted with Muslim heads. <laughs> Let me corrupt the Quran. Right? That's what Zayd must, must have been thinking. Because he didn't go to Ibn Mas'ud. Why would you not go to the number one guy? And, and why would you not accept what the, Ibn Mas'ud is saying? Ibn Mas'ud is saying, guys, you, Zayd is a deceiver. Don't listen to him. And you know what happened, guys? You know what happened? This same Ibn Mas'ud fled to Kufa. He fled. He took his own Quran, which had only 111 chapters. He fled to Kufa, which is nowadays Iraq. And he stayed there because he was afraid that they would take the Quran from him and burn them with the rest of the Qurans. Did you catch it? He fled, guys. He kept his own Quran and he took it with him. So, three chapters were not there in the original Quran of Ibn Mas'ud. That is, there were no dua prayers. So, the, those were prayers, guys. Those chapters are prayers. They should have never been in the Quran in the first place. And Obey Ibn Kaab, the th number three guy, right? The number three. One, two, three. Quran is reported to have the following two extra surahs. <laughs> so, here comes a huge, much bigger disaster. Now, we said that Zaid, guys, Zaid's Quran has 114, right? Chapters. But this number three guy, he makes it even more worse. He has 116 chapters. Obey's Quran, or Mus'haf, has 116 chapters. <laughs> so guys, is the Quran 114? Is it 111? Or is it, as this guy claims, 116? Pick and choose, guys. Two extra surahs. Guys, two extra surah. And we know, and we even know the names of those surahs. Surah 115, Al-Kal. This, this surah, guys, is not in the Quran. Right? It's not in the Quran. Look. It stops at 114, right? It stops at 114. An-Nas is the last chapter. Right? An-Nas. You have Al-Falak and then An-Nas. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So, this one is missing. Oh Allah, we seek your help and all the way to the end of this ayah. So, it's, it contains one ayah. 115 contains only one ayah. And Surah 116 is also missing. And we know the name. Al-Hafd. That's the name of the Surah. Right? So, Obey Ibn Kaab, the number three guy, 
had two extra surahs which both only had one ayahs, one ayah here, one ayah there, right? As you see, he added them extra to his own personal Quran. You see how many different Qurans are there? And this is why, guys, this is why Uthman ibn Affan, who was a caliph at that very moment, the same guy who ordered the Quran to be collected because the Quran used to be collected on paper, on bones, on stones, right? Even like we mentioned earlier on a paper that was under the pillow of Aisha when the sheep came and ate it, right? Remember? Remember? So the Quran was not yet in, actually in a, in a book form. There was actually one that was collected earlier like we mentioned by Abu Bakr and it was under the bed of Hafza. So what did uh, Uthman say? Go take the Quran of Hafza take it from under her bed and rewrite it he's ordering Zaid to rewrite it in the Qureshi dialect so corrupt it even more and let me burn the rest right let me burn all the rest of the Qur'ans question Muslims why would you burn original manuscripts guys we Christians when we find one manuscript now today we will be keeping it safe because we are not afraid if it contains some differences no christian would ever claim no christian would ever claim that we have an eternal bible because why because we say the word the word who is jesus himself is the eternal word of god we don't say a book is eternal. Why? Because if you're going to make that same claim like the Muslims, that means you are making a book eternal with God. And that's blasphemy. Did you catch it, guys? If you call yourself a Christian, never say that the Bible is eternal. Why? When you say that the Bible is eternal, that means you are putting the Bible on the same level with God. That is blasphemy, according to Christians. According to Christian teaching. Right? We say... The eternal word of God is Jesus himself. But Muslims put the Quran on the same level of Allah. They, when they say the Quran is eternal, uncorrupted, they are placing the Quran on the same level of Allah. They are making the Quran equal with Allah. Did you catch it? That's pure blasphemy, and, but Muslims don't think. Right? We say that the Holy Bible is the inspired word of God given to, let's say around 40 people who wrote the Holy Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament, right? So you, when you're going to make that claim that a book is eternal, that means you are committing blasphemy, right? And that's what Muslims have been doing, right? So we just showed you guys, in summary, these synoptic Qur'ans had the following differences, different numbers of surahs, right? Obey ibn Kaab, his Qur'an is 116, Zayd ibn Tabit, the Uthmanic Quran had 114, right? Let me put it again. 116 for Obey, 114 for Zaid, Uthman, right? And 111 for Ibn Mas'ud, right? Did you catch it? Guys, is, it, is this clear for you? Did, did anyone... Does anyone have a question about this as far as we just went? Do we have a question? So we can continue. Is it clear, guys? Okay. For three people at least it's clear. Okay. If you have a question about this, guys, please ask your question so we can continue. Any questions, guys? No questions? No questions. Okay, so it means that it's clear for the people that the companions that are mentioned had different chapters, different numbers for Qur'ans, and as we showed you, one chapter was as big as Surat Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, right? According to Urbay ibn Kaab. But 213 verses were missing. Disaster, guys, upon disaster, upon disaster. And why would you burn original manuscripts for the Quran? 
we Christians are so proud that we have thousands and thousands of manuscripts, right? We are not going to go and collect them and burn them. No, why? Why would you do that, right? Why would you burn original manuscripts? That means you are hiding something, right guys? Did you catch it? You are hiding the fact that there are many different Qur'ans. <laughs> Boom! Right? Right, guys? So, we Christians don't make the claim that the Holy Bible of God is eternal. That's blasphemy. We say that the eternal word is Jesus himself. John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then chapter 1, from the same chapter, John 1, verse 14 says, That word became flesh and dwelt among us. Glory to that word. Right? So never say that a book is eternal with God. That means you're committing blasphemy. Right? But Muslims say the Quran is eternal. <laughs> That's pure blasphemy, my friend. You are committing blasphemy to your own Allah. Keep doing that, Muslims. Right? Keep doing that. So if we continue, guys, that was a very dry stuff. I know, guys, it was really dry material. Raw material that you have to swallow. So, sorry for that. <laughs> so let us go to much easier stuff, guys. So if we go to chapter 23, Surat Al-Mu'minun, chapter 23, ayah 14, read with me. Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging cloth. I think many times did we mention this ayah, right guys? Here Allah is saying, you know, about the embryology um, uh, development, right? Mentioning the congealed dead blood, that Muslims are made from dead blood. And Christian prince love to talk about this, right? Where is Christian Prince when you need them? When you need him? Oof, oof, oof. Where is Christian Prince, man? Anyway. And we made the blood cloud, the dead blood cloud, into a lump of flesh. And we made from the lump bones. And we covered the bones. Which is another lie, guys. Look what the Quran is saying. According to the Quran, when you have an embryo, you get a flesh lump, right? Then you get the bones. And when you have the bones, the bones will be covered with flesh, which is a lie. Go do some research, guys. If you don't believe me, go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, or go to any scientist. He will tell you that bones and flesh, bones and flesh are developed simultaneously. Together, bones are not covered by flesh, right? Bones are not covered by flesh. Bones and flesh are developed together. So here, Muhammad lied. Muhammad got it wrong. Allah got it wrong. This means Allah is not God. He's not all-knowing and Muhammad is a false prophet. Now, why did I bring this ayah, guys? What has this ayah to do with today's topic? If we continue reading, you know, that was basically off topic, you know, I don't want to go and mention the amazing false scientific miracles, as Muslims call them, scientific miracles, yeah, it has nothing to do with miracles, it's false, it's false claim, it's a scam. And then we developed him into another creation. So blessed is Allah, Tabarakallah, the best of creators. This last part, guys, this last part was not given to Muhammad. What? Yeah, you heard it correctly. This highlighted part was not given to Muhammad. There was a guy called Ibn Abi Sarh. Abi Sarh, there was a scribe, a guy who used to write the Quran for Muhammad, right? Muslims say Muhammad cannot read and write. So when Muhammad asked this sarh to put the Quran on paper, you know, or on paper or bones, as we mentioned, on stones. That's how the Quran was written in the first place. It was not really in a book form yet, right? So this part, Muhammad stopped here, right? Allah 
another creation. Allah is saying another creation. Here, Muhammad stops. This, this is the last word. Now, when Muhammad stops, this guy, the scribe guy, the guy who was putting this eye on paper, said himself, so blessed is Allah, the best of creators. A scribe said this part. Muhammad, you know what Muhammad said? Yes, he says, put that one down too. But this guy was saying, hmm, wait a second. Aha, uh -huh, said Ibn Abi Sarh. Right? Aha, uh -huh, so you are basically lying. These are my words. These are not the words of Allah. So if you can be a prophet, I can be a prophet too. So this guy flew, right? He went and he apostated from Islam. He became an ex-Muslim, right? So this part was never in the Quran in the first place. This is, these are the words of a man. But Muhammad liked these words and he asked them to put them also in paper. So what Muhammad lied and said, yeah, 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 this is how it came down. No, Muhammad, you stopped here. So Muslims, Go and do some research. Right? Ibn Abi Sarh was a scribe guy, right? Who used to write the Quran for Muhammad down. And these are his words. So we should remove these words from the Quran, guys. Oof, oof, oof. I think Christian Prince have mentioned this before, right, guys? Well, Muhammad wanted him dead. The story goes like this. This guy went and clinged himself on the Kaaba, you know? The, the clothes, you know, the Kaaba is always clothed by a uh, black uh, clothing, right? With the, with the golden letters that you have now. So this guy with the ropes, he clinged himself on the Kaaba and because he was afraid that Muhammad would come and kill him. But then that guy right saved him Uthman saved the guy because Uthman stood in front of Muhammad said don't kill him please right Muhammad wanted him dead yes you heard it correctly oh you see how many disasters we just found guys disaster upon disaster disaster take notes guys please Take, take notes, go do some digging about Ibn Abi Sa'i, if you are really... Thank you, Jonathan, thank you. That's a really a big honor if I sound like CP. Because CP is a very really dear brother of mine. Guys, um, CP and I used to sit in one room back then <laughs> uh, on Paul Talk, on the Paul Talk panel, right? We are very old school people, we used to debate many shiuch, many imams, so... This is why we have basically the same style, right? I should have started doing this many years back ago, but I recently started doing a live show, as you noticed. But we are getting there. It's never late, right? <laughs> really? Okay. So, I hope you're taking notes. Uh, Phil Herrera is providing the links, guys. He just put... Thank you, Phil Herrera. God bless you, my friend. He just put the link for you for about Ibn Abi Sarh. Click on it, bookmark it, save it. Right? The story is a well, very well-known documented story. Guys, and as we mentioned earlier, chapter 15, ayah 87, we showed you the tafsir that the Quran and Al-Fatiha were never together. Right? Because Al-Fatiha, like Ibn Mas'ud's Qur'an, as we mentioned, was never part of the Qur'an. Because, <laughs> as you see, the proof is in front of you. It says, and the great Qur'an. Al-Fatiha, chapter number one, and the Qur'an. Right? Let us continue, guys. Now I'm going to show you, guys, some examples of today's versions. As we speak... As we speak, there are 32, at least 32 different Quran versions in 2019. 
Yes, you heard it correctly. There are 32 different Quran versions in 2019. We have them. We collected them. If you heard of the name Hatun Tash and Jay Smith, they in, in London, they collected the Qurans and they went there and they showed to the Muslims there. there are, look at these different Qurans and the Muslims went mad, right? Right? Yes, Jay Smith and his team, together with Hatun Tash and others, put them in the eyes of the Muslims and the Muslims were screaming. They wanted to steal the, the Qurans from their hands. Just go and watch the videos, guys. So, in this video, guys, we will furthermore destroy the 1400 years old Islamic claim. Quran is 100% corrupted by men, as we proved to you already, but we will continue doing that. There are also missing words in the same verse, and we are about to show you that, of different Quran versions, right? Or recitations, as Muslims call them. Dots and vowels can change the meaning for the same verse in different Quran versions. So there are even today's Quran versions, there are missing words in the same ayah, in the same verse. And dots and vowels in the same verse can also change the meaning. Many variants, exactly, Lydia. God bless you. What a mess, right? You, this is why I say disaster on top of disaster, disaster on This is why this video of today is very important. Yes, do you realize the level of deception? Exactly. It's huge, my friend. I don't, if you ask me, I don't understand why Muslims will be a Muslim for a split second. Why, are you, why do you stay a Muslim if you care about, about your salvation? The level of corrupting, corruption of the Quran is huge, huge, right? Now let us show you some examples, guys. Here is one example. This is chapter 57, guys. I made a video about this. I made a video about this. Actually, two videos, part one and part two, and then... Some people asked also for part three. So I made three videos in total showing examples like this. This is chapter 57 of the Quran, ayah 24. Read with me. Guys, this is the Hafs version and this is the Qalun version and the Warsh version. So we have three versions that do not agree with one another. The Hafs version that is the most used version in, in the Islamic world does not agree on this same verse, same chapter, same verse, you see this is the same verse, 24, 24, you see that guys? You understand where we are going to try to show you guys? This is the Hafs version that is used in Europe, in Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Qalun and Warsh are used in different parts of the world. For example, Africa, Morocco, Libya. Many countries are using different versions for the Quran. So there's not only one version, guys. We told you there are 32 different versions of the Quran that we found. And this is only a small part that I'm going to show you. There are many examples like this. Now, pay attention, guys. I'm going to show you the difference. You see this word? Here's Allah. Huwa Al-Ghani, right? This, this, these three words. You see this word here? Do you see it? It means he is, right? He, Allah, huwa, Allah is, he is, Allah is. Here, the same word is missing. What did Muslims always tell us for the last 1400 years? No dot is missing. No letter is missing. But here we see, we are showing you that a complete word is gone. Word, the word is missing from two, two versions, uh, three versions, because the Habs version is one, two, and three. These two versions, the Qalun version and the Warsh version, don't have this word. You see, this word here, it's missing. Huwa, he is. Allah is. He is. Is missing from here. Did you see it? 
Who up? Do we have any Arabic speaker here? Give me a one if there is an Arabic speaker like me who can confirm this. I hope there is at least one with us. Is there an Arabic speaker who can read the Quran like me? Anyone? Give me a one, please. No one? Yeah, so it's, it's missing, right? They always say there's, we have only one Quran, right? But wait, that's not true. Okay, we have Verum Absolutum who, the, who knows and speaks Arabic. Verum, can you confirm for the people who do not know Arabic in the chat? Can you confirm that Hua is missing? Give me one if you can confirm it. Do you agree? Do you see as an Arabic speaker that this word is missing? Oh, we have another one. Great, we have at least two more speakers, Arabic speakers like me, Abdel Haliji and Viram. So we have two confirmation who are agreeing with Rob Christian that a word is missing. This is from the Qalun versions that do not agree with Hafs version. Uh oh, uh -huh. who is missing? Huh? The word who is missing. That's example number one. Let us go to many different examples, guys. Chapter 28. Chapter 28, Ayah 48. Again, this is the Hafs version. And this is the Qalun and the Warsh version. So again, three different versions. Did you catch it? Same Ayah. 48. Same Ayah, right? So if we go to this word, you see this word? It means... Two works of magic, Sihrani, for the Arabic people, Sihrani, two works of magic. This word means two works of magic, Sihrani. But the Qalun version, so this is the Hafs version, the Qalun and the Warsh versions do not agree with the Hafs version. It says two magicians, Sahirani, Sahirani. So as you see, the vowels, change the meaning right the vowels and even the, here the alif i'm not sure about maybe it's a scribal error or whatnot that does not make it more worse than it is but you see the vowels can change the meaning do you see this these are vowels not dots right those diagonal uh, stripes basically so here it means two works of magic and here it means two magicians so Muslims, question, did Allah meant to say two works of magic or did Allah, when he gave the Quran to Muhammad, did he mean two magicians? Now is the two works of magic, is it the same as two magicians? The answer is no. For the two Arabic speaker people, confirm for everyone, help me to help you. Do you see the difference between this word and this word? The meaning is different, right? Give me a one if you agree with me. Waiting for your confirmation, guys. See, we have one one. Where is Vurim? Let's see if Vurim is still with us. Oh, we have Sharon, another Arabic speaker. We have another one, TC. Wow. Yes, the vowels are different. So. Vowels, like we said earlier, guys, dots and vowels can change the meaning, right? Did you catch it? That's what I was trying to explain in the beginning, right? So vowels and even dots can change the meaning of words, right? So this is an example where a vowel can change the meaning of a word. Let us go to a third example, guys. We are not finished. I hope you are enjoying this, guys, as I do. I hope you are enjoying today's teaching. How many videos have you seen like today's one, guys? How many people are explaining what I'm doing today? Right? Now, this is chapter 21, Ayah 4. Same Ayah. You see that? Same chapter, same Ayah. But, this is the Hafs version, the most used 
version in the world and here are the Qalun version and the Warsh version. Notice the meaning of the verse was changed. Why? Because here we have a totally different word. You see here you have the Q, the Qaf, then an Alif and then an L, right? Here you have only the Qaf and the L. So there, here in this word, the same first word, the grammar is different. Do you see it? And not only that, the meaning is different. The meaning of this word is different from this one. Are you with me, guys? Are you with me? So the first one says, Qala, my Lord said, Qala Rabbi, my Lord said, and in this, in these two versions, it says, Qul Rabbi, say my Lord. Qala Rabbi, my Lord said, same ayah, right guys? My Lord said, and here, different meaning, Qul Rabbi, you say my Lord, say my Lord. So, say my Lord, and here, my Lord said. Different meaning, different word. Even the grammar is different and the meaning is different. So here we have completely different ayahs, right? From, well, it's the same ayah. Different meaning. So how do you Muslims dare to say the Quran? Not one dot has been changed. Not one letter has been changed. You liars, you deceivers. Shame on you for lying to us. Shame on you. Shame on you Muslims for lying for the last 1400 years. Disaster on top of disaster, on top of disaster. You see that? The proof is in front of you. Another example. Let us have more fun. Chapter 66, Ayah 12. Chapter 66, Ayah 12. Same Ayah. Same Ayah. Ayah 12. You see that? This is again the Hafs version. This is the Qalun and Warsh version. Here, not only the words are different, but the doctrine is different. What? Yes, you heard it. The doctrine, you know what doctrine means? It's different. Why? Here's why. Here it says, Wa kutubihi, His books, the books of Allah. So that means the Torah, the Torah, the Injil, for example, the Zabur, the Quran. So all the books of Allah. So here, the, pay attention guys, pay attention. Here, this ayah, the same ayah is talking about the books of Allah. The Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, which are according to Muslim, the Psalms and the Quran. But here, it's talking, out, talking about وَكِتَابِهِ, his book. And in this case, Muslims say that this, this is the Quran. You see the difference in meaning and doctrine? This is, this is even a much more worse disaster, guys. Here we have not only different in words, right? But also the doctrine is different. Wrong tashkil, exactly. Thank you, Abdel Halig. My friend, sorry if I'm butchering your name. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry for that. But guys, you got the idea. How many videos did you see like this video, guys? Be honest. Right? You have to know Arabic, but I put this for you to make it easy for you. These are my added explanation. I did this in paint, actually, <laughs> for you to make it easier, right? So here, the Tashkil is changing the doctrine and the meaning. His book and his books, here it says his book. This is Qalun and Warsh versions of the Quran. This is the Hafs version of the Quran. And remember who Hafs is, guys. Hafs was a liar, a deceiver, and a thief. So the majority of the Islamic world are putting their salvation on the line, their soul on the line, on this guy, Hafs, who was a liar, a deceiver, and a thief. Remember? I think Christian Prince and others have mentioned this many times over. This is the same guy, Hafs. Right? Muslims don't have the Quran of Muhammad. They don't have the Quran of Uthman. They have the Quran of Hafs. They have the Quran of Qalun. They have the Quran of Warsh. 
Where is the Quran of Uthman? It's gone. It's missing. There is no Quran of Uthman. Where is the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud? We don't have it. It's gone. It's a disaster. And the Qurans that we do have are 200 years after Muhammad, basically. Hafs lived 200 years after Muhammad. And you see the disasters like this. Look how important it is to know Arabic, guys, to see the differences. So thank, I always say thank to the Lord that I learned this language to expose, to use this Arabic language against Islam, to expose Islam. Yes, they have only recitations. They don't have the Quran. Exactly, Marjana. Correct. Qalun is the name of the version of the Quran, guys. Warsh is the name of the version of the Quran. And Hafs is the name of the version of the Quran. There are, like I said, we found 32 different versions for the Quran. 32 different versions. Muslims claim they have only one Quran. No, that's a lie. And the proof is in front of you. Right? Let us continue. Chapter 3, Ayah 146. Chapter 3, Ayah 146. Same Ayah again, as you see. Different versions. Hafs, Qalun, and Warsh do not agree with Hafs. And here's why. And many and Prophet fought. Qatala. Nabi, Nabi in Qatala. So the Prophet fought. He's, the, the Prophet is fighting, right? He fought. Qatala. Here, here, guys, you see this letter is not here. You see this letter, this small letter is missing. And the tashkil is different. So the these things on top, here you have a something like this, a wa. It's not there, you see? So a letter is missing here. Tashkil is different. You see it? And the meaning is different again. And many a prophet fought. In the Hafs version and in the Qalun and Warsh version, who do not agree with the Hafs version, these, these two words mean, and many a prophet was killed. So, a prophet was killed and here the prophet is fighting. Did you catch the difference, guys? The prophet is fighting here and here <laughs> the prophet was killed. Different meaning. The grammar is different. Did you catch it? And how dare you again, Muslims, to say that the Qur'an is one. Liars, filthy deceivers. Shame on you for lying to us. Another example. Guys, there are hundreds of examples like this, but I'm go giving you the most known ones by the people who actually read. These are known differences. Chapter 43, another example. Chapter 43 of the Qur'an. Ayah 19, again the same ayah, 19, you see, Hafs version, Qalun version and Hafs version, again not agreeing with the Hafs, the most used one, right? Here this word means slaves of, Ibadur Rahman, the slaves of Al-Rahman, right? The slaves of Al-Rahman, but here the word is different. This word is not the same as this one. You see here, you see the dot, how the dot changes, how the tashkil changes. You see, pay attention, guys. Here, the dot on top, here the dot is underneath, right? This word means slaves of Al-Rahman, of Allah. Here it means with Allah, with Inda Allah. For the people who know Arabic, please give me one to confirm the differences. Do you see the differences, guys? Give me one for the Arabic. Abdul Haliga, thank you for your confirmation. God bless you. Muslims, why are you lying yet again? How many more examples do we have to give, guys? For tonight, it's, it's enough, right, guys? It's enough. So I, how many did I give you, guys? Let me go back to the summary. Like we said, Quran is 100% corrupted by men, Muslim men. Missing words in the same verse, like we said, of different Quran versions or recitations. 
Dots and vowels can change the meaning for the same verse in the different Quran versions. So by this, in this video, we destroyed the 1400 years old Islamic claim that the Quran is one. Liars, you filthy deceivers, you imams who are hiding this information, these disasters from poor illiterate Muslims in 2019 who cannot read, who don't know, do not know the Quran in Arabic. But we are here to show you the lies of the Imams who are, who are basically keeping Islam alive. Poor, poor victims. Yes, Falezida. Poor victims. Verum is asking, but now Muslims are claiming that it's not important because these differences don't change the general idea for the context of the ayah. How to respond to them, Rob? God bless you. Well, Verum, Verum. That's not true. We just showed you. Let me let me show you. Uh, that's false. Look at this one, Verum. Pay attention, my friend. That's false because here the doctrine. You know what doctrine means? The doctrine is changed here. This one, this ayah, same ayah, right? Sixty-six, twelve. Complete doctrine is changed. Why? Because here it's talking about all the holy books, gospel. Right? The New Testament, the Torah, the Injil, right? The Torah, the Psalms, the Quran. But here, the same ayah, as you see, but in a different version of the Quran, it's only talking about the Quran. So where is the same meaning, my friend? So they are lying. These are people who don't know what they are talking about, Verum. Right? Did you catch it? Do you understand where I'm coming from? So the doctrine, you see, it's not the same meaning. Right? Here it's talking only about the Quran. Here it's talking about the, all the books that Allah so-called gave to the people. To Musa, to Isa, whatnot. You see how important this is? Did you catch it, Verum? This is how to deal with that issue. If we go to a hadith, guys, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 32, 32, it says, narrated Abu Ishaq al-Shaybani, I asked Zir bin Hubaysha regarding the statement of Allah, and was at a distance of about two bow lengths or even near. So did Allah convey the inspiration to his slave Jibril? And then he, Jibril, conveyed that to Muhammad. On that, Zirzad ibn Mas'ud informed us that the Prophet had seen Jibril. Guys, pay attention. Muhammad had seen Jibril having 600 wings. Pay attention to the number, guys. So according to Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 32, 32, Muhammad is saying that Muhammad saw Jibreel, the, the so-called angel, we know it's a demon. He's having 600 wings. But according to the Quran, so according to the Quran, according to the Quran, the angels, the angels, guys, in this ayah, chapter 35, ayah 1, have how many wings? Two, or three, or four. What did, the, what did Muhammad say? 600 wings. So who is, who is lying? Is Allah lying? Because they say the Quran is the speech of Allah, right? So is Allah lying in the numbers of the wings? Or is Muhammad lying? Is it 600 according to Muhammad? Is Muhammad lying or is Allah lying? Maximum of four. Muslims, can you please answer this question? There must be one liar, right? Just wings, exactly, Phil. Exactly. Is Muhammad lying? Or is Allah lying? Is it 600? Or is it maximum of four? 
Aha! Where is Christian Prince? Christian Prince would have said, Oof, oof, oof! This is deep. <laughs> See? Guys, I wanted to show you a video about a guy, you know, to make it, you know, to change a little bit the, 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 the idea, you know, because I have given you for the last almost two hours, we are already live for one hour and 41 minutes. I know I gave you a lot of deep stuff about the corruption of the Quran. Maybe some people got bored and left. Well, that happens, right? So let us show you a video. The same guy here, this, you know, we are using this website of this Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Munajjid. I want to show you a video that's really funny and I really wanted to share it with you, guys. The same Sheikh that is explaining, yesterday we were mentioning that according to the Sheikh, there is no shame that slavery is allowed in Islam. This Sheikh, the same Sheikh saying that. Not me, not a Rob Christian. Sheikh was saying yesterday, we mentioned this, that it's okay to have slaves in Islam, even today, right? And this is the guy, the same guy. Look, Muhammad al Munajjid, same Sheikh, Saudi cleric, Muhammad al Munajjid. Do you see it? This was on Al Majd TV, an Islamic TV station, Saudi Arabia. So he's a Saudi Sheikh, respected Sheikh. He said this in 2008, guys. Let me play this video for you. Try not to laugh. الفأر في الشريعة الإسلامية. إيش نظرة الشريعة للفيران؟ سؤال. ما سموها سم الشريعة سمت الفأر في ويسقة. وأنه يقتل في الحل والحرم. وأنها تضرم على أهل البيت النار. وأن الشيطان هي سير هذه الفأرة. يعني هذه من من جنود إبليس يسيرها إبليس. He is issued basically a fatwa against Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry. Look at this madness. Tom and Jerry, guys. There are no better things to talk يعني about than Tom and Jerry. Mickey Mouse is haram. Tom and Jerry are haram. Oh, Same guy, and this guy is teaching Muslims about Islam. It's haram to, to watch Mickey Mouse, it's haram to watch Tom and Jerry. Only because they are talking and showing a, a mouse. Mouse is, is evil. What a donkey religion, right guys? Unbelievable. <laughs> this is haram, yeah. Same guy, guys. This guy is running a mosque. He's he's teaching in a mosque. He's running a website, right? Explaining Islam to to people, right? Yes, I've seen Tiberius. I have seen uh, the BBC Arabic Muta documentary. My comments about it. Well, this is Quran. This is Quran, my friend. So why are they, why are the Muslims complaining, right? This is Quran, let me show you. I mean, I, I can tell you, uh, my comment is, it's halal from Allah. Here is the muta, guys. Here is the muta. So enjoy, it doesn't say of marriage, this, everything that you see between brackets, it's not there in the Arabic. So enjoy what? Enjoy the female private part, right? Give them money, sexual intercourse with the prostitution, give her money, enjoy her for a couple of hours, one day, three days, and then 
it's over. So why are the people are complaining to BBC while it's in the Quran? Prostitution, muta'a, right? That's my, that's what I can tell you. It's in the Quran. So is the Quran, uh, should, should we remove this ayah from the Quran? Should we ask these Muslims who are complaining to BBC to remove this ayah, chapter 4, ayah 24, from the Quran? Huh? You tell me. I mean, if you're a Muslim, should we, should we remove it? BBC is not lying about it. And the Muslims who are practicing muta, restitution, are Shia, right? They are Shia Muslims. Why are they still practicing it? Because it was Umar who forbid the muta. So Umar basically put a, a, a big red cross in this ayah. Now, question Muslims and to the audience. Is Umar a prophet? Can Umar, is Umar Allah to abrogate an ayah, put a red cross in it? No. So basically the Shia are correct because they reject Omar, they hate Omar, they curse Omar, right? They curse many of the Sahaba and they are still practicing this ayah, the muta in this ayah. Yeah, so Omar went against Allah, yes, exactly. Because he was the one who forbid this ayah, the forbid the muta, right? So it's still in the Quran, but the Sunni Muslims don't practice muta, but the Shia are actually right about it because who is Omar right who is Omar to abrogate the eye of Allah Allah allowing prostitution muta do we have any Muslim guys do we have any Muslim who wants to call and refute my today's teaching any Muslim who thinks to have the knowledge and the courage to refute me Hmm. Seems that we are out of Muslims, guys. Thank you for the donations, guys. God bless you. I, we appreciate it. They're always hiding, right? So, guys, what do you think about the corruption topic today of the Quran? Was it too much? Should we do this more often? Or what do you think? Was it interesting? Or was it too raw material? It was halal. <laughs> Hope you will benefit from this, guys. Please download this video because I don't think there are many videos like this online to be found, right? Showing you examples, right? Mentioning the differences between the verses. Mentioning how Abay ibn Kaab ibn Mas'ud called today's Quran deception so please download this video if you like some parts cut them out and upload it on your social media accounts you use it show the, the Muslims who are nothing but victims that their Imams are hiding this information from them claiming that the Quran is not changed which is a lie and the proof we showed you today in today's live show. Guys, thank you for watching. I think we will wrap this up. People might be tired because some Christians, some friends here have been on the live show of CP and now here. So I myself, I'm getting tired too. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's teaching. We will see each other again very soon, Lord willing. God bless. Jesus is Lord. Islam is false. The Quran has been corrupted. We have refuted the Islamic claim that the Quran is one and not change, which is nothing but a lie and deception. Thank you for watching.